We're going to start out talking about the second law by using the example of heat engines. There are a couple ways to go. The way we did it in introductory chemistry was to talk about the molecules, the statistical distribution of molecules, and so on. And that's one way to do it. But in fact, thermodynamics rests not on the molecular theory. In fact, if tomorrow the theory of molecules, if somebody proved that there were no atoms and molecules, then thermodynamics would still be OK. So we're going to start uh, not talking about atoms and molecules like we did in introductory chemistry and talking about the second law and entropy. Instead, we're going to start talking about heat engines and Carnot heat engines and the Carnot cycle. Uh, that's the way most physical chemistry textbooks do it. Let's say a few words about the, the second law of thermodynamics. There, as you probably know, there are things that are spontaneous. They seem to happen with no urging whatsoever. Let's talk about a couple of those. Let's talk about this situation. Suppose you have a metal block. This is some sort of metal and this has a high temperature. And let's take another metal block, same metal block, but this is a low temperature. Now let's bring these two blocks together so they're now touching and so there can be some thermal contact between the two and this is high temperature and this is low temperature. So we just brought those two metal blocks together. What's going to happen? Well every time you do this in the history of humans every time you do this experiment take a high temperature block and put it into a low temperature block what happens is the high temperature block cools and the low temperature block heats up. In other words, heat is transferred from the high temperature to low temperature. It does, never goes the other way. Never have we ever seen that the high temperature block of uh, metal gets hotter and the low temperature block gets lower. Now this would, if that process were to occur, namely heat would flow from low temperature to high temperature, that would still be within the realm of the first law of thermodynamics. The first law would not invalidate it that's still consistent with the first law, but we never see that happen. So this seems to indicate that there is a need for perhaps a second law of thermodynamics. Let's take another example here. Uh, here we have a collection of gas molecules and here we have another collection of gas molecules. Let's make this helium here and make this argon here. And this is a partition here. Let's remove the partition what happens when you remove the partition? Well, now we just have a single container. Oh, he has helium, 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 argon here, argon here, helium, argon, argon, so on. What I'm trying to say is what happens if these gases mix? They mix like this. Never ever do you see a all the given a collection of helium and argon atoms, never ever do you see all the helium atoms go to one side and all the argons go to another. You never see that. So this is like a spontaneous process. It always happens. It always goes in one direction. This is a spontaneous process. It always happens. It always goes in one direction. For instance here, I mean, there's no violation of the first law of thermodynamics just to have all the helium in one and the argon in another, but it never happens. So what I'm getting around to saying is that we need another law, and that law is going to be called the second law of thermodynamics to predict the direction of spontaneity. Things that just happen that don't appear to violate the first law, but they always go one direction and they don't go the other.